Today I'm going to share with you some lessons that I thought about as I watered my plants, principles that are really important for us moms if we want to be able to serve others and continue to take care of ourselves as well so that we don't get burned out. So we're going to jump in today. I know I've got lots of gardening analogies coming at you, but I'm spending a lot of time out in my yard right now and it gives me a lot of opportunities to think about things. So I'm gonna share one of them with you today so that we can all uh, just be a little bit better. Hi, I'm Jessica Jackson, and this is the new way to thrive in motherhood by leaning into who you are, what you love, your unique family situation and personal mission to create a life that you actually want to live. I want to invite you to join me in saying no to the life of the exhausted supermom, burnout, victim thinking, being pulled in so many directions, suffering through survival mode, or being lost in motherhood, and say yes to building strong families and moving forward on our greatest goals in order to create a fulfilling life that we are excited to wake up to each day and become a soaring mother. This is the Thriving in Motherhood podcast. I would invite you to check out my free guide for you checklist, the five-step path from surviving to thriving. It will help you identify where you're at along the path right away and what to do about it, what to focus on, where to put your time, energy, and attention so that you can have this thriving mindset no matter what season of life you're in and start feeling better and more confident right now, today. You can get that at thrivingandmotherhoodpodcast.com slash checklist. We are going to be talking today about some more things I've been thinking about in the garden. So as I was outside one morning, we were clearing out pathways and laying down um, stuff so the weeds don't come back. So we don't have to keep clearing out our pathways. We're hoping. This is a grand experiment. We bought some fancy thick plastic. And as the morning started, I got out there, you know, early, 830 maybe. And everything looked great and green and lush. And by 10.30, I was noticing like the cucumber leaves were wilting, the potato plants were falling over, uh, the tomatoes were like shriveling, uh, yeah, the peppers were starting to fall over. And I was like, oh, dang. I realized it's been so hot for the whole week and I haven't watered at all. And so it was like the final straw and everything was just like before my eyes withering away. And I was like, dang it. So I had children. I had a child that was losing. It wasn't feeling very good. But I was like, if we don't water these plants right now, they are not going to make it. And so I like was like, hold on, child, one second and started like dragging the hose around and watering until another child was able to come take over watering the hose so I could go help out this other child. But like it was a kind of a like big moment. And I was also like, we'd already put in a lot of effort up to this point because we're just starting to get cucumbers and we're getting, again, I filmed this filming this in June, you're listening to it in August because we're road tripping. But anyway, so I'm, I'm, you know, we're just starting to get these, we're getting tons of green beans and cucumbers and strawberries. And, and so it's really exciting. And we, we see the potential of our tomatoes coming. There's starting to be little baby ones that are not ripe yet, but they're getting there that we're hoping to get before we leave. And I was really worried that if I didn't like take action right now, we, all of that would just end right away. It does, it ends, right? Our pea pants had shriveled up because they hadn't been watered. And so there's like a few pea pods left, but I'm not sure they're gonna produce anymore because I stopped watering. And so I was thinking about this, like, oh man, it'll be so nice next year when we put in a drip irrigation system because this year the big project was putting in a retaining wall. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll show some pictures for you because it's been fun. But we created some stairs, we built a retaining wall and it was a ton of work and, but it's great results. And now the reason why we had to do it was because we had two levels and the dirt was getting buried. Like, I don't know, they kept digging. Our kids kept digging and other kids kept digging. And so we were starting to burrow underneath the garden beds, garden boxes that we had. And so it was gonna, it was like mission critical. We had to tackle this. Point being, that the care of the garden is still very much, we have to remember to do it and then we have to spend the time and the energy and the effort to do it. Which also means I was realizing that it's harder for us to get traction on maximizing our harvest, using the harvest, storing the harvest, because I still have to put so much energy into watering the plants. And so I was just thinking like, oh, okay, this is great. Once we have the garden like water system set, and we've got the garden pathways covered so there aren't so many weed problems, then all of a sudden I can get better at doing some other things with the garden. And I can keep getting better because I've figured out some of these systems. And then I was even thinking like, oh, I've been wanting to 
plant like, some edible things in our front yard and grow like an herb, medicinal herb garden, a culinary art garden, and plant some native trees to Georgia, like some really cool things that grow well here in the South, like figs, you know, not your typical apple tree, but like, although maybe those too, but just some cool stuff. And persimmons, like good fruit that I used to, you know, that I ate in the Middle East. I would love to eat it here because it grows well. But I was like, I just cannot get there. My capacity just isn't working there. But I was thinking, oh, once the water is in place and like that, those daily nutrient things are gonna be covered and then I have extra room to do more. Okay, all of that to say is immediately I was realizing, oh, hey, wait a minute. This is why our little micro self-care habits matter so much. You know, in the Mom Matters 2 program, I teach you these micro habits so you don't get burned out. So you create um, like the systems around taking care of yourself so you can keep doing other things. Um, or why these systems in your home matter so much. Because when you're not constantly surprised by those necessary and essential things that have to happen to keep your family fed, alive, and clothed, right? Like, then, oh, then you can start adding in some other things and you can start maximizing some things and you can start really enjoying some things. Like even enjoying the fruits of your labors because if you take care of the laundry but you're so overwhelmed by dishes and food, you didn't even get to enjoy the fact that the laundry was done, right? You're just tackling the next huge thing. And so as the more of these things that you can put in place, the more habits you can put in place, the more systems and routines you can put in place, um, the more you're able to maximize and enjoy and savor and, and feel the benefits of your efforts. And so if you're not in Mom Matters too, like if you're, ha if you're having a hard time taking care of yourself, I would highly recommend that you come join us in there because not only is it like teaching and educational content, but we've got a community in there. And there are some wonderful women from all over the world that are so good about sharing their wins, sharing their successes, sharing their struggles, sharing where they're getting stuck. And it's very positive and cheering each other on. It's very much no complaining, but it's problem solving and, um, and just really empowering conversation in that community. And uh, uh, prices are going up. So if you haven't grabbed it by the end of July, the prices are going up in that program. So come get it now, lowest it's ever gonna be again. And so anyway, what's really great is that whatever you're doing right now, if you can just pick one thing, one, one of the drip irrigation system things that you can get going in your own life. And I always recommend, it's so easy to start with the house, but the problem with starting with your house is that if you are, don't already have some to take care of you, you're not gonna be able to sustain the things going on in the house. So are you getting dressed in the morning? Are you brushing your teeth? Are you doing your hair? Are you reading your scriptures? Or having spiritual study or prayer or you know, those spending time with God, whatever that looks like for you and whatever your beliefs are. Like if we're not doing those basic things, it's gonna be hard <laughs> to feel good. It's gonna be hard to have clarity about what matters. It's gonna be hard to do some of these other things that you need and want to do sustainably. And so I always recommend, actually in the Mom Matters too, we start with time with God. That one I feel like is the big domino. If we can figure that one out, God can help us do the rest. Um, he can help personalize and customize things for us. So we always start, you know, in that program, we start with the time with God. Um, Cause then he can teach you. And I, you know, and, and it supercharge anything else that I offer because you have the principles, but you also have God and he can teach you those too. So I hope that you have a wonderful week. I would love to hear in the comments, what is the one thing that you're going to start doing to help you start installing that drip irrigation system so you can get some traction in your life and start to really enjoy the harvest as you're transitioning, you know, from summer into the school year for those of you that are in this part of the world. And for those of you that are like in our Soaring Mother Society calls, we've got people like in Australia and it's winter for them. So I realized some of this like seasonal specific content is always totally backwards. But with the changing of the seasons, whatever part of the seasons you're in, like, this is a really good time to ask these questions of yourself and kind of figure out where are you at? Where do you need to put a little extra water? And where do you need to set up systems so the watering happens without you having to think about it so hard um, so that you can be more sustainable moving forward in your own life. So have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.